And so you can say that the low hanging fruit when it comes to renewables in the solar sector is focusing on solar heat. Uh, people mix up this and think that they look at photovoltaics and see ah, a few percent there and I mean that's it's no way you can replace fossil fuels with that. And in, in partly in part they are right, but uh, when you look at heat it's a whole other game. Uh, both in, as you say, production, generation of, of heat, but also in the way we can store it, right? Yes. Electricity is very difficult to store. You can have an expensive battery and store it for a few hours or a day. But solar thermal, you can fill a big hole in the ground, like 50 or 100 or 200,000 cubic meters, and filling it up with 95 degree hot water in the summer. And you can have that to heat your city or your industry the whole year, because that large volume of water it keeps hot over the seasons. Yeah and one way to, to use this is um, with uh, district heating and we mentioned that in the in the previous episode but I would like to come back a little bit to that because it's so interesting to see what they have done in, in Denmark. For yeah. yeah yeah in Europe we have 6,000 cities running district heating and the district heating is basically a big boiler over here burning fossil fuel or, or wood chip. And then there are hot pressurized uh, pipes going into ground and heating the houses and the commercial buildings. In Sweden, every second home is heated with district heating. And this district heating system is fantastic because you got rid of all the burning in, in individual houses. And instead, you have one large efficient boiler that is producing the heat. And what we say in the first step is stop burning in summer. There is no reason for this big uh, boiler to run in summer when the sun is shining. You can have a solar thermal field and feed the hot water from the solar collectors out to all the houses instead. And then in winter, you can have this seasonal storage and keep the hot water from summer and operate the city the whole year. And in, in Denmark, there are a number of cities doing this and actually 126 cities running solar thermal. Yeah, so seasonal storage is definitely coming and combining it with solar heat is definitely something we can scale up on a, on a global scale, right? Yes, and quickly. Yeah, and quickly, yes. Much quicker than batteries. Yeah, so then to a little bit look at from the economic side, you have done this, you have said that uh, you have looked into this, that uh, how we can combine renewable energy in order to replace on a cost to cost basis. Uh, so can you take us through this? Yes, when we discuss with those multinational food and beverage companies, there's a very strong idea that they want to change from fossil fuel to something else that is zero CO2 and cheaper than the fossil fuels. The problem is that there is nothing that fulfills this to 100%. But what we'll be able to show is that they can switch to, for example, renewable electricity, but that will be a quite high cost. Or they can switch to solar thermal. But if we would run the storage to run an industry the whole year around, the solar thermal will also be quite expensive. Or they can buy uh, biofuel and burn that, but that is also very expensive. So picking any one of those three energy sources, that will be expensive. But what we can also show is that sometimes the electricity is really cheap. And sometimes if you use solar thermal in summer, solar thermal is also really cheap. So by combining renewable electricity, when the electricity is low cost, solar thermal, in summer and with a reasonably big storage so that when the sun is shining, you run your factory on solar thermal and then a renewable fuel that you burn when you don't have anything else to access. You actually can cut the cost of renewable heat by half compared to use renewable electricity. So this is how strange it might sound, a new idea in the food and beverage industry that you need to combine different energy sources to get the lowest cost of heat. And we are helping now a number of industries to do those calculations. What is the cheapest combination of renewable energy sources? Because there is no silver bullet that immediately solves their problem. No. 